The Philippe Smith Catalogue Raisonné. Its launch is the culmination of a two-year effort. The team has searched everywhere, France, the Netherlands, the USA, and elsewhere, for all of the works of Philippe Smith, to include them in this bilingual and online catalogue. Among the catalogue's objectives are to promote the artist's work and to increase appreciation of his achievements. A catalogue raisonné is, of course, a reasoned catalogue. It presents the reasons for associating information with specific works of art. It presents the evidence, and this according to the strict conventions of art scholarship. It presents not only what we know, but also how we know it. And a catalogue raisonné strives to be a complete catalogue, that is to find and document all of the artist's work. Currently, the catalogue includes more than 550 works. And one of the advantages of the catalogue being online on the web rather than in printed form is that it may be updated on an ongoing basis as new works are discovered or new information is developed. And in addition to providing a complete catalogue of all the known works of Philippe Smith, and this documented with the professional tools of art scholarship, this catalog also aims to be an easily accessible and user-friendly catalog for all types of users, art professionals, collectors, all lovers of art. Search and display tools make it easy to find and display individual works. The catalog is accessible online via the Philippe Smith website. The address of the website is easy to remember. It is the artist's name, spelled as one word. At one address, you can access both the catalog and much interesting additional information. The address is World Wide Web, philippesmith.com. We will be showing you the many features of the catalog raisonné, but first a few words about the Philippe Smith website. The website provides interesting information on important people, places, and events in the life of Philippe Smith. So as we show you what is on the website, we will also mention some of these key elements of Smith's life and career. For example, his birth in modest circumstances in the Netherlands. The family's move to Paris, where Philippe would learn to draw, and where he would illustrate places and streets and monuments. Paris is where he would encounter other struggling artists, such as René Massé, who would remain his lifelong friend and supporter. The frequent and detailed correspondence between the two friends is the source of a great deal of detailed information about the artist's life and about specific works. Massey saved many of the letters, and he kept detailed notebooks about their discussions. Prior to the First World War, Philippe Smith met the Dutch art lovers Nicola and Berendina Urban. They would become like family to him and provide him a studio at their home in the Netherlands. Their homes in the Netherlands would be his creative refuge during the years of the First World War. The Urban's daughter, Mareka, was the artist's favorite model. She would be the subject of many works by Philippe Smith. The pastel of Mareka with a white feather fan would be one of the first two Smith works to be purchased by Theodore Pitcairn in 1921. Five years later, she became Mrs. Theodore Pitcairn. Of course, Theodore Pitcairn would become Smith's most important collector. He would encourage and support the artist throughout his life. Nicolas Urban and Philippe Smith would remain close friends always, this despite changes in the Urban family. The Urbans were divorced in 1928, and Nicolas soon remarried. Berendina and Philippe would make a life together. They were married in 1940. The website arranges these stories in interesting biographies and chronology pages, and one of the aims of this information is to help understand the aesthetic challenges faced by Smith, as well as some of the themes of his works. For example, some of his paintings with religious themes are related to the writings of Emanuel Swedenborg. The website details how Swedenborgian church teachings reinforced the mysticism of Philippe Smith. His mysticism was already present well before his conversion and would inspire several paintings. 
Also presented is the influence of other artists, such as Monet and Van Gogh in his early years, and later El Greco. The website also has sections about the Philippe Smith Endowment Fund and how to contact the team. And the website is completely bilingual, English and French. And so is the Catalogue Raisonné, of which we will now examine the major features. First, we want to show you what is contained in a catalogue entry for a specific work. And for this, we will look at the work that we have already mentioned, the pastel Mareka with a white feather fan. Important work, important person. Looking first at the elements of a catalogue entry. The catalogue number for the work in this catalogue, and the title and physical attributes. Then are listed inventories, historical inventories that have mentioned the work. The provenance, the history of its ownership. Exhibitions in which the work was shown. Literature and primary sources, that is a list of the letters and published articles which mention the work. And notes, additional background information on the work. For example, the full text of letters in which the work is mentioned or described. Now a few more details of the standard elements of a catalog entry. Looking more closely at the initial section. After the catalog number, there may be an inventory number by which the work is referenced in other inventories. Also listed are any alternate titles by which the work is known. A word about the title of a work. If we know a work's original title, which was often in French, and in some cases inscribed on the work itself, we use the French title even in the English version of the Catalogue Raisonné, and followed by a translation in parentheses. The original French title is referenced in the writings of Philippe Smith or in exhibitions or critiques during Smith's lifetime. For works handed down through the Pitcairn family or through the family of Mareka's sister Lottie in France, the title may be in French or English depending upon family tradition. In these cases, we use the traditional name, whether French or English. Then follow the physical attributes, the medium, pastel or painting, etc., and its dimensions, and whether it is signed or dated, or whether or not the work bears any inscriptions. And then finally the credit line, that is, where the work is located presently. Then follows a list of the historical inventories in which the work was recorded. Inventory numbers are very important tools of art scholarship for keeping track of a specific work. In the Philippe Smith Catalogue Raisonné, there are three important numbering systems that we would mention here. First, the catalogue number, as assigned by this new catalogue. This number always starts with the prefix PS for Philippe Smith. And then for this work and many others, there are other inventory numbers associated. These are prefixed with P for Pitcairn, as assigned by these two important inventories. First, the inventory established around 1940 of the works possessed by Theodore Pitcairn. The original of this inventory is now part of the archives of the Glencairn Museum. And second, the inventory of Pitcairn's artworks established around 1957. This inventory is now in the archives of the Lord's New Church. And in this other example is even a third inventory. This work was donated by Pitcairn to the Lord's New Church. In 1984, it was recorded in an additional Lord's New Church inventory, and then this inventory was updated in 1998. Its assigned number, P193, is cited here in the catalogue raisonné. The provenance is the history of the ownership of the artwork. For this important work, the provenance section is very brief and significant. As mentioned, it was one of the first two works by Philippe Smith to be purchased by Theodore Pitcairn. He wrote in a letter in 1921. In Holland, I bought two paintings, or rather pastels, from a friend of Mr. Pfeiffer, Philippe Smith. 
I feel certain he is the greatest living artist, quite a young man. I met him and liked him very much. And of course the subject portrayed in the work explains why the ownership history is so brief. It was kept in the family. It was through this work that Theodore Pitcairn first became aware of the future Mrs. Pitcairn. The work is now in the collection of Mrs. Eshawa Pitcairn Pinnock, her daughter. Please note that we use the original Dutch spelling of Mareko for consistency throughout the catalog. Each catalog entry contains a list of the exhibitions in which the work has been featured. And important to note, the exhibition title is a live link. Via the link you can open a separate web page that will tell you more about the exhibition and gives a full listing of the works exhibited. Another important section of a catalog entry is the Literature and Primary Sources section. This is a listing of letters and published articles which mention the work. Always featured here are letters by Philip Smith. His letters often discuss the context or the particular challenges he faced in creating the work. Also featured here are the relevant excerpts from the diaries of René Massé, Smith's close and longtime friend who preserved for us valuable information about Smith's life and work. In the notes are the original text of letters and articles referring to the work. Many of these notes are letters written by Philippe Smith, and all of Smith's letters are in French, his second language. His education in France had been limited. His written French very often reflects this in irregularities in spelling and grammar. In these notes, his original French text is displayed, as it was written, along with an English translation, which is, of course, without the irregularities of spelling and grammar of the original. And when the subject of the work is a real person, the catalog entry contains a link to the biography of that person on the Philippe Smith website. And each catalog entry contains a related work section if there are any works which are considered to be related. In this example is included the work Spring Song, which was acquired by Pitcairn in 1921 at the same time that he acquired the Mareka portrait. Also displayed is a link to what in the catalog is called a series. In this case, the series is all of the works in which Mareka is portrayed. Other examples of a series are self-portraits of the artist, or flowers in a vase. Works in the catalogue raisonné may also be viewed according to the collections to which they belong. Via the collection submenu, you can see all of the collections for which we have been given permission to display the works. These are both private collections and public collections. You can narrow down the list of collections by clicking on one or more filters. A click on the link displays all of the works of the collection. There is also a submenu for exhibitions. Each exhibition starts with the exhibition reference name, which is consistent throughout the catalog, and then followed by any additional information that may be available. In this example, there is information about how we were able to use newspaper articles and other documents to reconstitute the exhibition, because only a fragment of the exhibition catalog is available. Exhibitions, like many aspects of the catalogue raisonné, involve detective work, and this detective work is still in progress. For example, for this exhibition for which we have only a part of the catalogue, and for which we have had to rely on these other documents to help us reconstitute the exhibition list, there are still additional unknowns. Because even for works in the partial catalogue, some works are mentioned which we have not yet found. So we list the work, but mark it as unidentified if we are not able to link it to one of the works which we already know. We are still searching for additional information, such as articles on the exhibition which might contain a detailed description of a painting. This might help us to identify it if it is somewhere in a known collection. Or perhaps it's in a collection which we do not even know about. 
We hope very much that with the publication of the Catalogue Raisonné, other owners who are presently unknown will come forward, and we will be able to add their works to the catalogue, making it even more complete. We have mentioned that literature and primary sources are available for an individual work, but there is also a full listing of literature from the main menu. There are filters for selecting types of entries. And here is an example of how the letters of Philip Smith are displayed. For a prolific writer like René Massé, there is much additional material and you are invited to click to open the additional display. His journal is rich in detail about Smith's work and their times together. We arrive at the end of our tour. We have shown you the website and the major features of the Catalogue Raisonné. We hope that you will explore them on your own. If you have any questions, you can always contact us by email. We will be happy to hear from you.